Hey there, guys. How you doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to those around the world. Welcome back to another Pokemon Night video featuring Sylveon. Coming through the jungle in that Master Rank game. It's for Age Slash, man. Charizard, Age Slash, having a really rough time in this bot lane with uh, Jigglypuff and Mudkip. Sadly enough, Jigglypuff did get killed, which is unfortunate. But I was able to come down here and pick these both up because they were being a little bit aggressive on top of the Mudkip. Which is unfortunate, but I should be able to get this red buff and get back down there to B's before they clear them all. And if they do, that's fine, because I got the experience from getting the double kill there, so it's all good. But it's more so, I think they'll be a little bit aggressive here. And they are. Cool. Free kills all day. What is a Mudkip when he's dead? 9 out of 10. Second death for him in 30 seconds, which really, really feels bad. We should get these free points. They're able to pick up these Adinos here. Move on with the day. Now, Wigglestuff does have double buffs, so this lane should be pretty much cake and over with now. But we're going to go up, get the rest of these core fishes here, and move on with the day. I hate to see it, but a lot of junglers that I play against and or play with, you know, on my team or whatever for randoms, because sometimes they end up do get in the jungle for me. They don't capitalize on these core fishes in the middle, and I don't know why people don't do this. Look at that. Dead. Third death in under 60 seconds for Greninja. Unfortunate. Look at this, man. Taking this 1v2. Look how much healing that was. With potion assault vest going on here, protecting me a little bit more, and draining kiss is absolutely nuts. We're running, yeah, speaking of which, we're running Focus Band, Assault Vest, and Muscle Band on my Sylveon. With Mystical Fire instead of Hyper Voice, we'll get into it, but with this build setup right here, it allows you to be that front line. It allows you to be a little bit more bulky, opposed of the normal Sylveon type of players out there. There's a lot of people that just go like pure, pure glasses for some reason. I have no idea why. It doesn't make any sense. So you can just run freaking Focus Band and then two DPS items if you want to. You got to keep in mind your unite move isn't there to do like a burst, a huge burst of damage. It's like to give you that sustain with that movement speed, and that little bit of shield to move out. You know, just move on out. It's not like Greninja. It's not like H Slash. You know, it's not like Gengar or whatever, where it's going to be here to do that giant burst of damage, man. But where your damage does come from is your sustain. So in other words, you're able to stay in these team fights a lot longer with this build setup because you're running more of like a bruiser based item choice. And with Mystical Fire, Draining Kiss with Potion, with Focus Man, you have a ridiculous amount of sustain inside these team fights in 1v2s and 1v3 situations. It's not just one-on-ones. In one-on-one, you would win 9 out of 10 fights, depending on the enemy Pokemon. Most of the time, you will win that one-on-one -on -one with this build setup. If you have Focus Man ready, they have Focus Man ready, you will win that 1v1. Guarantee it. Now, on top of that, Sylveon could also run Hyper Voice, but... I hate to see it. You probably hate to see it. We all hate to see it. 9 out of 10. Most Hyper Voice Sylveon players are bad. Yeah, you guys are just awful. That's just the way it is. On the why? <laughs> it's not just, it's not you per se. I think it's more so the nature of the ability. Because it's one dimensional, it's one directional. Meaning if you cast Hyper Voice, they, the players, they know which way to go to dodge the ability. Because they can't, you can't cancel the animation. You know what I'm saying? You, you're locked in that animation. We should be able to take this 1v2. Okay. Never mind. Focus man likes to proc after we die. We'll talk about that too in a minute, I guess. But and anyhow, like well, with Hyper Voice, it does a ridiculous amount of damage. So let's say you are you are playing Sylveon in the solo top lane, or you're playing Sylveon as the main DPS in bot side. You getting level 4 is just guaranteed free bees because Hyper Voice does so much damage. But at the same time, Hyper Voice is a hit and miss ability. It's very inconsistent because of the, the nature of the ability and how it's aimed, how it's performed. Whereas Mystical Fire is just, it's so much more consistent for the average Joe, for instance, where they can't really mess up. The only time they can mess up is, is if they're not keen on when to go in or when not to engage. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of Sylveon people, or a lot of players in general, like, heck, I see it with the Relodon nowadays, where... Dragon Pulse has been pretty much gutted, right? So they're running Flash Cannon. And the issue with that is players just think they can just run into the middle of the team fight, hit Flash Cannon, and just chill. It's not how it works. It's the same thing with Sylveon. You can't just jump in and out every single team fight thinking you're not going to pick damage or die instantly, you know? You have to pick and choose your battles and who to go after inside these team fights. Now, on top of that, with your Draining Kiss ability with Potion, you're up a lot longer than you would think inside these team fights engagements here. This is at objectives, 1v1s, 1v3, doesn't matter. 
your goal is not to sit here and burst down every single target. It's more so give you that sustain, sustainable fight to make sure you can stay alive a lot longer for your team to come back after they die so they can get back to the fight and then get these rotations off. They, they can get these objectives. Now, when it comes to mystical, no, sorry, mystical fire, uh, focus band, it's, it's like a hit or miss item for me. Like it's very, very good, right? We all choose the item for the active effect. When you get below a threshold of HP, it starts activating, starts healing you, right? Yes and no. Because there'll be occasions where you're inside of these team fights, in which you saw earlier when we were down in bot lane with Wiggly Tough and myself and Greninja and Slash, whereas Focus Band did not proc until I died. And I think it's because there's too much damage overall into the game, where sometimes Focus Band doesn't even register that, hey, I should activate now. And then when it activates, it's, it's way too late. You know what I mean? I think having it not just a quick burst of HP is great. Not not doing that, right? But at the same time, it needs to make sure it's going to activate. Like, guaranteed going to activate. But what are you supposed to do? You take the item for the active effect, and it doesn't want to work half the time. But hey, you can't say it's not one of the best items in the game. It's just something you also have to consider every single time you're inside of a team fight, regardless of what Pokemon you're playing whether or not your focus band is going to activate. It's just, it's weird. So sometimes it feels like it's a little bit inconsistent. Poor H slash man. Who doesn't get to play the game today? Redemption being level 14 on the enemy team and still getting stomped. He will kill me here with red buff, unfortunately. But we can, like I said, we can draw this fight out long enough to get my team to stay up top side and get that Rotom. Look at this, man. This is Sylveon in a nutshell, boys. And I think the only reason why I was able to get killed here is because he had the shield from the Hoopa. You give him a little bit more of sustain and the damage reduction with the shield. That was it. Without that, I think we had that fight. But it's all good. We were able to stay stay down in the bot lane in that one, what was that? 1v3? 1v4? Yeah, 1v3. Whatever. My team was able to get Rotom. We're ninjas in midside are already getting ready for this Aftos fight. In which we should be able to contest and take. But we'll see. Charge was popping your night move. Unfortunately, we're gonna kill Age Slash because he's just derping around. As do most Age Slash players, to be fair. They kind of just engage willy nilly and be like, hey guys, I united on their full HP. Poor Wigglytuff. Good job, though. She she did take a lot of beating there. We killed like a Ninja, too. I think we're golden. Now, I shouldn't necessarily jump in here, but like I said, I do have the sustain to stay alive here with my abilities with Potion and Draining Kiss. We should be golden. You guys keep on uh, doubting Sylveon. And I think it's the nerf, the buddy barrier, that allows her to do as much as she's doing now. And it's not necessarily she's doing more damage, per se. It looks like she's doing more damage because they have less HP because there's not a lot of buddy barriers stacking. There's not a lot of buddy barriers in, in general now because they give less health in the early game. In which, technically speaking, you do do more damage, right? Because they have less health. But at the same time, so many other Pokemon are squishier, whereas Sylveon doesn't really change that much because she's always been a bulky, bulky Pokemon. Depending on the item choices you run on top of Draining Kiss with Potion. It's just so solid right now in this metagame versus a lot of burst potential Pokemon. But overall, man, it was a fun game. Hopefully you guys do enjoy it. Either way, this has been Paul's Play. So if you guys smash that like button, come join the Discord. Tell me I suck. Keep a lookout for Espeon coming out here soon. We will be spamming Espeon montage, live stream, what have you on day of release. I did tell you guys she will be free. What did I say? Catch you guys in the very next video. Stay safe out there.